Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R720 XD server memory upgrades and how to properly configure the system. For starters, the R720 XD is the exact same from a memory standpoint as the R720. The only difference really is the uh, form factor. So um, for CPUs and memory and everything else that we're going to talk about really in this video, it will be the same. Uh, if you're uh, talking about drives and storage, really that's the uh, the main difference between the XD and then the regular 720. Um, and even the uh, 620 has the same memory and procs uh, as the 720 XD. Uh, it takes Intel E5 2600 V1 or V2 series CPUs, which is an LGA 2011 socket, um, and there are uh, two uh, CPU sockets in there. Uh, there are 24 DIMM slots, and you can put two types of memory inside, ECC registered, also known as RDIMM, or you could put load reduced memory known as LRDIMM. There are some advantages with LRDIMM in the fact that you can actually do uh, triple capacity overall. So with uh, ECC registered, you can max out at 512 gigabytes via 1632 gigs at 1600 megahertz. Now load reduced, you can actually put in 64 gig modules and put in 24 of them. So you can do 24, 64 gigs uh, also at 1600 uh, megahertz. Now there is an option if you uh, care mainly about speed, you can use a 32 gig LR DIMM that's at 1866 megahertz um, and you'd get less capacity overall but you'd still get a faster speed. So depending on what you're looking for uh, that might be a good option for you as well. Now one of the questions that we get asked a lot of times is how come uh, with ECC registered you're only putting in 16 DIMM slots and with LR DIMMs you're putting in 24 DIMM slots. And honestly that's a great question. Uh, it's a common question um, and that's what's known as the rank rule. And I'll explain the rank rule a little bit more when we open it up because I want to actually show you the memory channels. But basically it's a memory channel issue and how many you can load with quad rank memory. So before we open it up I'd like to get my ESD gear on make sure that we're all safe and we don't shock the system. So I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from getting electrostatic discharge. So first things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open, and you'll see it will pull back a little bit and just lift the top up. Very simple, very easy. All right, now that we're in, you will notice that there is an air baffle, or also known as an air shroud. Uh, this is covering the uh, CPUs and the, uh, the RAM slots just to prevent uh, any overheating. Very simple, you just wanna lift this straight up and put it to the side. So as we originally discussed, uh, there are 24 DIMM slots and there are two CPUs. So this is uh, CPU 1 over here and this is CPU 2 over here. CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots on this side of the board. CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots on this side of the board. Uh, this is important really only if you're wanting, uh, running one CPU because um, if you're running one CPU and you try to put uh, memory in the slots over here, it physically just won't register, so you need to make sure you put everything um, on the slots over here. Uh, we recommend if you're using a machine like this, putting in two CPUs just so you can maximize the overall performance and get more out of it. Um, now, if you are uh, running uh, one or even if you're running two, you need to know how to properly configure it if you're not fully using all 12 DIMM slots. Um, so this is pretty simple for the most part. Um, what you need to do is you need to pay attention to the start of the memory channels. Um, and as we had originally kind of discussed, um, there are 12 DIMM slots per CPU, which means there are four memory channels per CPU, and there are three DIMM slots per memory channel. Um, and this is important for the rank rule that we had originally discussed, um, but this is also important for how you configure the system. So uh, we'll show you how you do it. If you're going to be putting uh, a module in, you want to always make sure that you put the module in the start of the channel, which is the white DIMM slot. So it'll go white, black, green, white, black, green. Um, and Dell's even labeled the DIMM slots, which make it easier for you as well. So if you're loading them, you know how to properly do it. So let's just say, for instance, you were only putting in four DIMM slots. You'd want to put it in white, 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 so the four whites with um, CPU one. Now I think you should always put in more than that, but in general let's say if you're putting in eight and you have two CPUs, you want to put it in all the white slots. If you're putting in 16, you want to put it in white, black, skip the green, white, black, skip the green, which is also important for the rank rule. If you're putting in quad rank ECC registered memory, you can only put in two DIMMs per memory channel, so it has to be the first two DIMMs of each channel, which is uh, the white and the black, always skipping the 
uh, green. Now, if you're completely loading it up, that's when the green comes into play and you just load everything up. So, um, as we had kind of discussed, I wanted to talk about the rank rule. And the whole thing about the rank rule is, is you cannot have more than eight ranks per memory channel with ECC registered for DDR3 motherboards. And this is a true across the board for uh, Dell memory, um, for HP memory, for uh, Super Micro. It, it's really for all of them. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, you don't break the rank rule. Now with load reduced modules, which is uh, the module I'm about to load in right now, this is a better technology and it breaks the rank rule and you can uh, completely go over the eight ranks. Um, and even with 64 gigs, there are eight ranks per, so you're going 24 ranks per uh, memory channel, which is pretty awesome. So um, before I start loading this up, I want to make a quick note for you that there is a notch, also known as a key, uh, that's on the middle of the module. This is very important for how you load it uh, because you'll notice also on the motherboard, there's a notch and it flips from uh, from side to side. So uh, it starts on this side of um, for CPU one, moves over here, and then moves back over here for CPU two. Um, so you have to kind of flip the modules around. Um, it's important for a number of reasons. One, it'll prevent users from loading the wrong module. So you can't put a DDR4 module in this machine. You can't physically put a DDR2 module in this machine. It just it won't even work. Um, and it also, uh, it's important because if you accidentally load it wrong, you can damage the module or you could damage the motherboard, which would be even worse because then you have to replace the motherboard. So uh, I'm gonna go and show you how to properly configure it and a couple things that I like to do um, before I actually get started. So one of the things I like to do, um, especially since we're doing all 24, is I'm gonna remove the fans. Um, this is very simple. You're just gonna pop the two blue tabs up and you'll see it kind of even lifts up as you go and then you're just going to want to pull this out. I'm going to put this over here to the side for now. Normally, if I, uh, if I was just doing it myself, I'd actually recommend putting it right here, but I don't want to block the screen for the video. So um, the next thing that I personally like to do is I like to push all the tabs open before I load any machine. Um, just makes it easier so you're not fumbling with memory in your hands while you're doing it uh, and potentially could you know, drop a dim and damage uh, part of the motherboard. So I like to just go ahead and make it easy and knock them all out. So. Um, I also like to note if you are maximizing it and you don't have to start with the channel, um, sometimes I, I'll start with the insides just because it becomes a tighter squeeze when you have the heat sink or you have some cables or the side of the server on it. It's a little bit harder to squeeze the modules in. So sometimes I'll work my way in just to make it a little bit easier for me. So, okay. Um, I also want to, uh, to note that we have a common error from some of our end users uh, where they think a module does not register. So I want you to hear this right here. You hear that click? That click lets you know that you have fully seated the module. Uh, it's quite a common error where someone thinks that a DIMM has failed and really they just need to reseat the module and make sure that it's fully in there. Happens all the time. Uh, doesn't matter if you're a novice or an expert, it's very easy to do. So I'm actually, like I said, I'm gonna pop out over here just to make it a little bit easier when I get to the middle because it's just a tight squeeze over here. Okay, and you'll hear again the nice little click. So just like that, in a matter of, you know, a few minutes, this machine now has 1.5 uh, terabytes of memory inside. I mean, this is gonna really increase the overall performance. And that's one of the things that I always tell um, some of our customers that if you were going to get uh, a brand new machine from Dell, um, like uh, say an R740 is out right now, or R740XD is out right now, um, these are you know 10 grand machines, 10,000 plus really, depending on how you configure it. And that's not a cheap price tag by any means. And so one of the things that we recommend for people, especially um, if they're just running uh, their server for you know, r emails and uh, 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 just some of their files and just simple just everyday virtualization, some of the stuff that uh, is just pretty common uses, you don't really need the latest and the greatest. And a machine like this is honestly uh, more than enough to handle uh, some of just the everyday applications that are out there. So one of the things that we recommend is to kind of like a band-aid to, to extend the life of the server for several more years is memory. I mean, really memory is what's gonna boost the performance. So um, upgrading your RAM to uh, the max 
uh, of, of 1.5 terabytes is what we really recommend um, at least having 500 um, and 12 gigabytes uh, to at least get a, a good overall performance is something that I would, would also suggest if you can't uh, fully spend the money to, to buy all the 64 gigs because I can't I do get that 64 gigs are kind of expensive they're you know roughly 110 bucks a stick so uh, it does add up but it is a lot cheaper than a brand new server and then having uh, an IT guy come out and have to uh, set everything up so anyhow I'll show you how to put it back together and then uh, we'll call it a day so uh, we're gonna need to put the uh, the fans back in so really you just need to line everything up one thing I will note is just to be careful, there's uh, some cables over here. So you're going to put the tabs back in and you'll feel it slide in, nice and simple. And then we're just going to put the air baffle back on top and you'll feel it slides in really easy. And just like that, we're done. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by. If you need any upgrades for your R720 XD, uh, please feel free to reach out at uh, sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And thanks again for stopping by. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below.